time. BBC World Service, now we rejoin Paddy Feeney in the Saturday Special Studio. In part two of the programme today, we've got commentary on the second half of the League Cup final between Nottingham Forest and Southampton at Wembley. Uh, for Nottingham Forest, Chilton, Barrett, Lloyd, Needham and Clark, McGovern, O'Neill and Gemmell, Woodcock, Bertles and Robertson. And for Southampton, Geno, Peach, Waldron, Nicol and Golat, uh, Holmes, Ball and Williams, Hayes, Boyer and Curran. At half-time, it was Nottingham Forest nil, Southampton won, but that all changed about 13 minutes ago. It's all happening in these opening minutes of the second half. Still Southampton under pressure. The ball with Robertson inside the penalty area. Nicholas there to clear. Burton takes it from him. And a great goal by Gary Burton. <laughs> there we are. Great excitement there also at Wembley, meaning that it's Nottingham Forest 1, Southampton 1, as we go across to Sir Alan Parry. It's an intercession on the halfway line, a cry from about 50,000 voices to Terry Curran and handled it, and the referee says, yes, he did. Free kick, quickly played forward by Forrest, not a good one. Southampton are back in possession on the halfway line, but not for long. Little Gemmell moves into the action, picks it up, inside left position, is dropped down, but wisely the referee says, play on. Good refereeing, because Forrest are in possession with O'Neill, just outside the penalty area. Going forward, O'Neill still has the ball inside the box. Finds Barrett, Barrett drives in a right foot shot low, and to Geno's left, but behind for a goal kick. Dennis, I wonder what you see the significant difference in Forest's play in their second half. Well, as you said, Alan, I think that they're we're beginning to send uh, the big men forward, and the midfield are getting much, much forward. Gamble, in particular, is making a lot of good runs to the left there, and they're creating a bit more with O'Neill is uh, coming up, uh, Barrett is helping him, and really they're just more going forward there, uh, whereas before I think they were a bit strung out, they were knocking balls up to Woodcock and Bethel, but really they were too far from them, and they were on their own, not getting control of it, and therefore not really building up any attack. I think in the second half they've they started to come forward as a unit. But it's Southampton coming forward as a unit now with Peach halfway inside the Forest half, leaves it to Williams. Slides the ball 10 yards out towards the left touch line to Holmes, who flicks it back in field again to Peach. And then he returns the favour to Holmes as we welcome listeners to BBC World Service. 21 minutes of the second half gone here of the 1979 League Cup final. And the scoreline reads, Nottingham Forest 1, Southampton 1. Southampton have taken the lead in the 13th minute of the first half with a goal by David Peach. But uh, uh, Forest equalised in the early moments of the second half a very good goal by Gary Bertles, following a bad mistake by Chris Nichol, Southampton centre half. Ball at the moment is inside the Forest half, and Frank Clark has played a very good ball forward to Woodcock in the outside left position. Walden is in there quickly again. Throw in to Forest. Oh, and they've taken it so quickly that Southampton are in danger. Gemmell comes forward. Bertles tries a shot and goes behind. I thought for a moment Peach might have deflected it behind. I think Forest certainly did. And all the players think it's a corner. But in fact, in the end, it's a goal kick, and that, again, was so close. So we're halfway through this second half in a game that is really getting better by the minute. Nottingham Forest 1, Southampton 1, to continue commentary, Peter Jones. As Terry Geno will take the goal kick for Southampton, and certainly a transformation in this second half since Gary Burton's got that goal. We're still really seeing some of the best now from Nottingham Forest, and they get a free kick just inside the Southampton half. And the big men will go up. Needham's going to go up for this one. Larry Lloyd staying back. Enormous contrast, of course, between the two front runners for Southampton, Hayes and Boyer. Tiny figures and being marked by uh, Lloyd and Needham. It's Lloyd who's going to take the kick, and he's been looking perhaps for Needham. Needham making a run now, just inside the Southampton area. Needham still going for it. Gendo punches it high. The header's still there. Confusion. O'Neill comes into the area, and Neil can cut this back. He can't. It's blocked, cleared by Waldron. And Geno, who looked such a good goalkeeper in the first half, has looked certainly hesitant in the second. But ball will set uh, Hayes going himself. Hayes down the left for Southampton. Checks his stride, finds Holmes. Holmes will hold it, feeds Hayes. Five yards outside the forest area. Turns it across that area, looking for Curran. But in fact, uh, Clark is at least six inches too tall for Curran. It breaks, and Robertson, deep inside his own half, will try a run finds Woodcock, good skills by Woodcock, turns away, controls the ball well, finds Bertels, back to Woodcock, just inside the Southampton half, 1-1 here, good tackle, ball played forward, a chance for Bertels, that goes up, offside, just a 
uh, as far as having a forest are concerned, the lights just took about two hours to raise that flag. So, booze all around the ground, it's offside, three kicks for Southampton. It seemed to me that it's the lines which took a long time to... It was the right decision, Peter, it was offside, definitely. But the linesman there was uh, sort of more or less half sleeping there because he took ages to put his flag up. And of course, by doing that, Vessels must have thought he was onside, but he was definitely off. 24 minutes gone then here in the second half of the 19th League Cup final at Wembley. Nottingham Forest 1, Southampton 1. David Peach after 13 minutes. The first half belonging just fractionally to Southampton. And then Forrest getting right back on terms in the 50th minute with Bertel. And that shares an ironic one in that the linesman who gave that offside decision has now given the free kick for Forrest. Halfway inside the Southampton <coughs> half, O'Neill turns it short. Colin Barrett, bad ball from Barrett though, picked up by the big, powerful figure of Golats, the Yugoslav. Golats will see Curran. Curran's got space. Halfway inside the Forest half, he's going at Frank Clark here. Still Curran holds, he'll go down the byline, it's run away from, no it hasn't, pulls the ball back, but Govan's there, tidies up, finds Gemmell, just outside his own area. We're seeing more and more now of McGovern and Gemmell. In the first half, O'Neill was only the only man in midfield for me for Southampton. As Deno comes ten yards outside his area, he had to there, clears the ball first time. Lloyd is there, Larry Lloyd, big, powerful figure of Larry Lloyd. Got an FA Cup runners up middle with uh, medal with Liverpool. He wants a winner's medal here today. Well it's 1-1 one, one, and we've had 26 minutes in the second half. And David Peach will give away the corner. Far more noise now coming from the Forest supporters in this second half. Colin Barrett's there for the corner. It could well be Tony Woodcock will take it. They're both there close. It's on the Forest right near side to us. In the end, Barrett runs away and it'll be left to Woodcock, who's now calling Barrett back for a short corner. Neither of them seems quite to know it in the end. It's a long one from Woodcock inside that area, headed away by Golatz. Breaks over as far as O'Neill, slides the ball to his right. Barrett checks it, holds it, lays it high across the area. The header straight up in the air. Geno's come out. He's challenged by Bertels unfairly, says the referee. Geno picks himself up and the free kick is inside his own area. Plays it first time to Alan Ball. Not seen the very the best of Alan Ball. Holds it, plays it square in field. Holmes. Plays it to Williams, still deep inside their own half, though Southampton. Chris Nickel, whose bad mistake in fact allowed Bertels to come in for that equalising goal. The booze as Nickel plays it back to Ghetto. We've had 26 and a half minutes here in this second half. 1 1, and much, much better second half this one as Geno. This time it's a good kick from the Southampton goalkeeper, looking for Boyer, breaks the off Needham. Frank Clark turning it back to Peter Shilton. Had to make just one save in this second half, but made two or three in the first half. A long kick from Shilton, just inside the Southampton half, breaks awkwardly for Walden, did well to clear, breaks fortunately to Hayes, Hayes running in field, really a tiny figure, but he finds Holmes. Holmes, not a good ball, the idea was right, the execution was all wrong though. Robertson plays it back to Frank Clark, the ball is still just inside the forest half. Holmes comes back, battles for it, finds Williams. Williams comes inside Gemmell, but uh, two other forest players head him in. Holmes tries to pick it up from Gemmell, a clatter of four bodies, and finally it's Gemmell who comes away from it. He's being chased by Golat, brought down by Golat. Always looks worse of course, Archie Gemmell, small, Golat's big. Golatz brings him down, and indeed Peter Reeves thinks it was serious enough to have a little word with the Yugoslav defender. Here at Wembley, his first season in league football, and Nottingham Forest has the free kick. A yard in from the far touchline, the Forest left. Frank Clark is there, Robertson's there, it'll be Robertson who will take it. 1-1, 27 minutes gone here. Short to Gemmell, Gemmell turns, good skills by Gemmell, goes past Williams, Williams obstructs him. Another free kick to Forest, arm raised by Peter Reeves, indirect free kick. A couple of yards outside the... Southampton area to the left as Forrest look at it. Robertson, and he takes them well in these set pieces, George Robertson. A wall of two Southampton players. Robertson comes up, chips it high across the area, headed away firmly by Dickel. Shot comes in to the cover, by the clear by Rosen. The flag had got up in any case by the linesman on the near side, and it'll be a free kick to Southampton, and it's just about on the penalty spot. Well, certainly Southampton have weathered the storm, Dennis, in this last 10 minutes, but it's been. Really, that they're going to be blown away. 
Well, the uh, Nottingham Forest, uh, particularly sending Gemmell. Gemmell now is beginning to get into game a lot, lot uh, more than he did in the past. He's making those uh, good runs up the left. And in fact, the Hampton are not picking them up. But they have weathered the storm. And with the uh, Nottingham Forest sending more players up, it's always dangerous. We've seen this a hundred times in football. That the team is attacking, putting pressure on, they can't get that goal. And all of a sudden, they're breaking away. And we've got to watch for Curran in particular. Oh, when they have broken away, it looks very dangerous indeed. So that's the thing that they have got to watch. Well, we've got 16 and a half minutes to go. Yeah, it's going to be extra time, of course, if the scores are level. As again, we've got a uh, tiny figure of Hayes. Lloyd is there, looming above him. Turns it back without any problems at all. Shilton, long kick from Shilton. Deep inside the Southampton half. Nichols there, gets the good bounce. Gives it away to McGovern, though. Finds Gemble. Gemble is it forward to Woodcock, going for the return, can't get it, good tackling by Williams, fierce tackling going on at the moment. Nichols there, comes away from that scattered of bodies, and finds Ball. Ball cuts the ball to his left, finds Williams, Williams keeps it going to the left, Holmes has got space, going forward, challenged by Gemble. Holmes picks himself up, still finds the ball, sweeps a good ball out too far side, Golatz is there. Robertson's come back to defend for Forrest. Golatz is there, gets the return ball from Allen Ball, asking an awful lot though of the defender. He slides down and the ball comes off Golatz. And it's a goal kick once more to Nottingham Forest. Peter Shilton will take the goal kick once more, defending the goal to our left. Just under 15 minutes to go here at Wembley. Nottingham Forest 1, Southampton 1. Forest for League Cup holders and champions. And I suppose you could call them favourites now too for the European Cup. But it was Southampton who took the lead after 30 minutes with the man in possession at the moment, Peach. Not for long he isn't, because Bertels takes it away from him. Finds O'Neill. Laid down the line by Barrett. Again, a muddle of bodies, and the loose ball breaks to McGovern, Forrest captain. McGovern tries to thread it through a space which is far too narrow in any case. Golatz finds Alan Ball. Golatz now runs under Barrett. Goes through to the touch. And McGovern will want to take the throw quickly, which he does, finds Robertson. Robertson forward. Chest it down well by Woodcock. Good skills there by the England International. McGovern, Gebel, halfway inside the Southampton half. Good ball to find Robertson. He likes this situation, Robertson. And he wins the call. He's happy with that. Just a little bit of jumping. This is the table. He's unhappy about it. And it'll be a corner to Nottingham Forest. Far side of the field. Again, John Robertson will spot the ball up very carefully indeed. John Robertson's penalty that beat Liverpool in the replay of last year's final. Here comes the corner, high across the Southampton area. Peach heads the ball away, as far as McGovern. Plays it straight back in, offside, against Robertson. Play on, says the referee, Southampton in possession. They're not for long, though, because it's played back once more to Frank Clark. Robertson, he's got two Southampton defenders, turns the ball across the area, it's cleared. As far as McGovern, straight back in again. The header comes in, it's offside in any case. I think Needham knew he was offside there, the big man going up for the set piece. <coughs> So it'll be a free kick to Southampton. Only about five or six yards from their own goal line. They've certainly lived dangerously Southampton in this second half. What an incredible moment where the ball literally ran along the white line, all the way along the line. For the Forest supporters, it must have seemed as if it was taking hours until it was finally cleared. 1-1. One, one. Southampton run up at half time. 1-1. One, one. Gary Berth is making the scoreline in the second half with 14 minutes to go. Needham. Picks up the ball just inside his own half. Short finds Gemmel. Gemmel tries to turn the ball back. Not a good ball from him, though. And Boyer, by way of Alan Ball, trying to go forward. Good tackle coming in there from Barrett. Barrett forward. Woodcock throws it to Burton. Burton's going forward here for Nottingham Forest. Burton's still got it. Gary Burton. 2-1. Nottingham Forest. A great moment for Nottingham Forest. And Gary Burton's. The man, his manager said, began this season a million miles from Wembley. Well, he's got a million miles from Wembley now. He took that in the Manor Ball not so long ago. He was playing in the Midland League. Now he's playing in the Super League. So Southampton have got an awful lot to do now. They play the ball across the forest area. Shilton punches it away. Williams is there. Lloyd High. Plays the ball forward. I think it was a bit of backing into the into the line there by Boyer. It is indeed going to be a free kick to Nottingham Forest. That's Gary Birdwell's 20th goal of the season. Could be important. It was certainly sweet as far as Nottingham Forest are concerned. Southampton may not be out of this yet. But after all the pressure from Forest in the second half, there's a feeling that that second goal may well be the one that matters. Well, I'm sure a lot of the men have got other things to think. 
but it's Myrtle on the ball, halfway inside the Southampton half. And Southampton now must push everyone forward. Boyer. Ball breaks from Boyer, Gamble's there, and in any case it was a foul, a foul by Boyer on Larry Lloyd. So it'll be a free kick to uh, Nottingham Forest on the halfway line. And they will take plenty of time. I remember uh, Brian Tuff saying the first time he went to see Gary Birtles playing in Midland League football, he was so bad, the best thing that day was the Oxo at half time. Well, Birtles has come good for him now. As the free kick is played long, Woodcock will run for it. And I think he may well have won the throw. He has won the throw. Good work by Woodcock there. A yard from the corner flag. And at the moment, this particular part of Middlesex is all red and white. The Forest support is away to our right. And they take the throw short. Robertson will battle for it. He's trying to get the ball back to Gamble. Can't. Cullen does well for Southampton there. Comes away with the ball. Tries to find himself space at a better angle. He's being hemmed in by McGovern. Still gets the ball forward, but he didn't get the direction right. But at least they've uh, won the throw, Southampton, off the legs of uh, Frank Clark. A couple of yards inside the half, although the referee has said there was infringement just before that in any case. So Southampton have one better than a throw in. They have the free kick. They don't get very far with it, though. And the ball is finally cleared and cleared. It's by it. Bertles. And there's a cheer, of course, from the Forest supporters. Now every time Gary Bertles touches the ball. Allen Ball. Short to his left. Each scorer of Southampton's goal, down the line by Holmes. <coughs> Holmes is challenged by uh, Barrett and by O'Neill, but he's won the throw for Southampton. Ten yards from the corner flag, Southampton still going forward with nine and a half minutes to go here. Forrest leading 2-1 in this 19th League Cup final. And Barrett for Forrest, short in field McGovern. McGovern to Bertels, and it's Bertels against Nickel. And when he scored, then Bertels was the man who beat Nickel. Nickel will stay with him, tall, strong and bearded. He won't let Bertels out of his sight at this moment. Bertels does well, though, keeps possession. Good skills by Bertels. Nichols still stays with him. He stands on the ball, Bertels. He can afford to now. He's keeping it on the segment of the corner flag. And finally, the ball goes into touch. And it'll be a free kick for Nottingham Forest. In the end, Chris Nichols losing a little bit of his patience and stamping on uh, Bertels. And uh, a wry smile from Dennis Law, who was known to lose a little patience when he played in his uh, heyday. Forrest takes the, take the free kick. O'Neill, each did well to chest that one down. But again, Forrest are, are really fighting for every ball now. Gemmell cuts the ball in field. A chance for him. Tony Woodcock. Oh, lovely goal by Tony Woodcock. And the Southampton head drop now. Grant Tuff gets to his feet and shows a little emotion. Gemmell did it right. Just as it looked as if the ball was going to be crossed from Gemmell. He saw the gap and he slid it through and Woodcock turned and from the narrowest of angles he put the ball in the far corner. They shout, easy, easy. It's not really been easy. But Tony Woodcock gets his third League Cup goal of the season. And let's remember at one stage they loaned him to Lincoln and they loaned him to Doncaster. I bet they're glad they didn't in fact keep that loan permanent. He came back, did a good season he's done perhaps the best of all here because that now surely is the end of Southampton and Tony Woodcock and Gary Bertels between them have won the League Cup for Nottingham Forest well it's hard to say this Peter but of course uh, Nicholl by giving away the stupid free kick on the corner like that really uh, give away the third goal it wasn't so much a great goal as a great pass by Demo there finding Woodcock inside the six yard box to knock the ball past the other. Forrest coming forward 1-4, but this time the ball is over the top of the uh, front runners. And Alan Ball, well, they're asking an awful lot now of Alan Ball. He was saying to us this week that with all those, he was not to enjoy today. But he would have enjoyed it, of course, much more if that score line, which we see away to our left, could have been reversed. At this moment, Lottie McGinnity is going to play his half and that's to bring in Tony Seeley. Because the... Southampton substitute is on the sidelines at the moment. He's just 19 years of age. He's never scored, in fact, for Southampton. If he was to score now, they'd give him the freedom of the city. And it's Austin Hayes, the 20-year-old Londoner who comes off. He's done, I'm sure, as much as anyone could expect from him. So 19-year-old Tony Seeley, a Geordie, comes on for the last five and a half minutes of this League Cup final. But at the moment, Nottingham Forest have both hands very firmly on the two handles of that cup. The cup they won last season, although they had to go to a replay before they beat Liverpool 1-0.
They lead 3-1 at the moment. Southampton have played their last card of Tony Seeley. And they'll try to come forward. Williams. Tackled by McGovern. Williams brought down. Free kick to Southampton. About 15 yards inside the Nottingham Forest half. Nottingham Forest 3, Southampton 1. And this after David Peach has put Southampton in the lead after just 13 minutes. And Seeley gets his first touch of the ball. Turns it to Allen Ball. Ball reverses it out once more to Peach. Holmes, he's lost it though. As always happens, of course, in this situation. Every lucky ball now goes to the side in front. You can, you can be sure that everything that's 50-50 now will go for its way. Allen Ball. Challenged by Barrett. Lost the ball. McGovern. Woodcock. Good tackle by Holmes. Williams. Picks it up for Southampton, just inside his own half. Holds the ball. And if he wins the throw, it's about 10 yards inside the Nottingham Forest half. Near side to us, the Southampton left. Williams, uh, he's got to take time because he's got nobody to throw it to. And finally throws it to Peach, gets the return ball. Goes down the line. Good skill here by Steve Williams. He's still got control of it. He's in a difficult situation. Then finds Seeley with a short square ball. And Seeley tries for a little glory. Tries a shot. No power, really, and the angle was still wrong for him. No problem for Peter Shilton. So it looks as if Southampton now, with just four and a half minutes to go, are going to lose the final prize. They've got a long stint to come here. They think four First Division sides themselves, Birmingham, Derby, Manchester City, and particularly that very, very difficult semi-final against Leeds. But at one stage, they were 2-0 down and dead at Ellen Road. They came back to make it 2 all and one down at the Dell. I remember a great night that was. But it looks now as if the ultimate prize is in the end of their Forest 3-1 with their experience. I doubt they're going to give this one away now. We've got four minutes to go. And Nottingham Forest, Holders, and indeed the champions. I've got a throw. Robertson will take it. But again, Wembley is the best place in the world to be when you're winning. Because you know that all the songs around the stadium belong to you. And it's Nottingham Forest now who will sing their side all the way home for the last three and a half minutes here. Southampton certainly have played so well, particularly in the first half, when they were adventurous and positive. They're trying to come forward now with Holmes. Ball breaks away from Holmes. Cullen will go down for it. A challenge coming in from Frank Clark. Ball goes into touch. It'll be a throw in to Southampton, which Cullen himself will take. It's about four or five yards to the corner flag. In fact, he's leaving it to Golat. So Golat will take the throw back to Williams. Williams holds, has to check and come away. Turns the ball across the area. Waldron going up for that left piece. The shot coming in. Oh, what a tremendous goal by Waldron. Oh, that was out of nothing. A tremendous goal from Malcolm Waldron, the local boy. Waldron with a set piece. The ball came over. Waldron had a look. There was nothing doubtful about that. He hit a tremendous shot. His fourth goal of the season. And he really whacked that one with his left foot. And he went into the far corner. In fact, I think it may well have been Nick Holmes and not Rick Walden, or Mark of Walden. It was indeed Nick Holmes. My apologies to him, but they were both there together. I don't think it'll matter to Southampton. What does matter is that Nick Holmes has made it 3-2. And we've got now two minutes to go. Well, a bit of uh, lax uh, defending uh, there by to me, uh, uh, Lloyd, uh, because the ball coming in there, and for some reason he didn't uh, attempt to clear it, uh, Peter. And it's uh, fall, it fell really back at home to crack a tremendous shot. But to me, a bit of a mistake by Lloyd. Well, that's 3-2, and uh, we've got less than two minutes to go. And that certainly looks a little better as far as Southampton are concerned, but it really was a shot out of nothing. A shot out of nothing. Nick Holmes will be pleased with that and perhaps released now from Nottingham Forest of Orders because a moment ago they were singing and now they're whistling and perhaps feeling it's not quite so certain. I wonder, with a minute and a half, are Southampton going to take us into extra time as the ball is played back to their goalkeeper, Geno. A long kick from Geno onto Holmes. And a ball in the court for Boyer. Boyer going forward. Shilton comes up right to the edge of his area, though. And he's stretched himself on that one. We've got now one minute to go by our watch. There just be a little time added on by Peter Reed. And the pitch of change slightly by that totally unexpected goal to know. Boyer brought down by Barrett. Free kick to Southampton. 
four or five yards inside the Nottingham Forest half. Alan Ball suddenly full of urgency. Lays it square. Golat coming forward. Golat lays it outside to Curran. Curran will go at Frank Clark in the end. He plays it short to Seeley, the substitute. Good tackle coming in from Roberts. Forest going back to defend now. They lead 3 2. And we've got 20 seconds to go here. Nottingham Forest 3, Southampton 2. 1 0 it was to Southampton. 1 1. And then it seemed that Nottingham Forest had stirred it up. And Nick Holmes. Just a little more pride for Southampton. And now the moment when everybody stands back and says well done to everybody else. And Brian Clough and Peter Taylor come over to shake hands with Lonnie McMenemy. And Brian Clough, quiet as he always is on these occasions, will wait I'm sure for his side to come off the field. But in the second half get his floor, what a great cup tie that became. Well, Forrest, of course, as uh, we felt in the, in the first half, Peter, with only being one goal down, that they could stay at that, and Southampton don't get a second, then we feel that the more experienced uh, Nottingham Forest would come through, and they did it. It was a great second half. I, I felt before the game that there could be a few goals, because uh, the way that uh, the both uh, sides sack, and we saw that 3-1, it's finished 3-2. I don't think I should disgrace this Southampton, really, but uh, to me, uh, it's probably the best big cup final in many years. Yes, because certainly these long league cup final occasions have sometimes tended to be rather negative. Well, there was nothing negative about this one. And what's good for the Southampton players is that away to our left, they're still being cheered by their supporters. Just a moment ago, Nick Holmes just walked away from that little posse of players now in the centre circle just to applaud his own supporters. So in the next few seconds, Wembley, of course, will belong to Nottingham Forest because that's the moment when the steps up to the Royal Box seem so short when you've won and so long when you've lost. And Alan Ball will turn away with his defeated Southampton side. Did everything he could indeed. He may feel that this on his 31st occasion at Wembley is his last Wembley. And on this occasion, it's Southampton, in fact, who are coming in first. Alan Ball shakes hands with Lonnie McMenemy, and then with Kenny Cannon, and then with Malcolm Ward. And then you still keep Kenny Ghetto, remember, only a year ago, was playing for Halifax. Looked so good in the first half, but really could do nothing about it in the second half. So it's the defeated who go up first. And Lonnie McMenemy is waiting at the bottom of those steps to shake hands with everybody. Before this game, I remember he said, if they lose, they lose together. And that's what they've done this afternoon. But the biggest year must come, of course, for the winners. Because after it's all over, they don't remember the side who came second best. They remember the winners. And the winners are Nottingham Forest. John McGovern with Brian Clough's manager at Hartlepool, and then with Derby, and then at Leeds and now at Nottingham Forest. He played in all four divisions when he came to 20 years of age, John McGovern. But the moment, hard like moment, but just wait for a few more seconds, because it's the defeated who come up to the top of the Royal Box, and they'll receive what in fact is a runners-up medal. And if you talk to players who've been here, they'll tell you the only difference is the back says runners-up, and that's not enough. The cheer now is for the men in red, Nottingham Forest, the League Cup holders, and the champions, and European Cup favourites. The third time they've been here in a year, and they've won on every occasion. John McGovern gets to the top of the steps, and he gets to a crowd of Nottingham Forest supporters, gets to the top of those steps, turns to his left, one of those supporters, in fact, has put a Nottingham Forest scarf around his neck. He loved that. The Scotsman from Montrose, John McGovern, always looks so calm, always looks as if he's in a practice game, really, and he played so well in the second half. That's the cheer, and in the moment you hear the biggest cheer of all, because that will be when John McGovern raises the League Cup, which already has red and white ribbons on it. The red and white ribbons of Nottingham Forest, they polished it all year, Nottingham Forest, and he'll hold it up now and say it belongs to me. Tremendous things there at Wembley as Nottingham Forest retain the League Cup. Right, let's get back to the happier subject, Association Football once again. And in the sunshine of all things, at Wembley, the League Cup final between Nottingham Forest and Southampton. Nottingham Forest 3, Southampton 2, Peter Jones. A League Cup final that filled the stadium with incident, adventure, excitement and five goals that might have been doubled. Southampton began looking sharp and hungry. And just when Nottingham Forest seemed to be finding their own rhythm, David Peach scored for Southampton. Hesitancy in the Forest defence, a through ball for Peach, a suspicion of offside, not so. He rounded Chilton 1-0. 
Then Southampton played some of their most effective football. Terry Curran had some telling runs down the right. Steve Williams and Nick Holmes were taking midfield. And Phil Boyer and Austin Hayes, both diminutive little figures, were causing problems. But for Shilton, there might have been two more for Southampton. But the second half belonged to Nottingham Forest. An opening five minutes of explosive moments at either end until Gary Bertels gave Forrest the equaliser. A mistake by Chris Nickel, Terry Genner was lost, and Bertels fired in from the narrowest of angles. New York was Don McGovern, Archie Gemmell and Martin O'Neill stoking the fires in midfield as Robertson, Woodcock and Bertels tore into Southampton, who lived so dangerously, in one incident the ball rolled right across their goal line. The second seemed inevitable, Woodcock was the scorer, shooting under a diving Geno from a glorious through ball from Gemmell. Bertel scored the third, a superb goal, beating off Nickel and rounding Geno. The last fling came from Nick Holmes for Southampton, five minutes from the end. They knew it wasn't enough, Forrest knew too. They've won, they've retained it, but what a final it was.